Hey everyone. So I um, I've just been learning a lot this these last few weeks about life and about the faith. And I want to share things in a way that everyone can understand. So from people who are new to the faith, people who have yet who are curious about the faith, or for people who are maturing or are mature believers in the faith. Um, so I guess I, I want to start at like a, a, a level to where like anybody could understand the message. So I, um, I've just been learning about what faith is. I haven't always really fully understood what it was or what it meant or how to have faith in God. Faith is trusting in God and that he will provide, take care of you and provide all of your needs in every area of your life. Um, and so the topic of today's video is about plans, our plan versus God's plan or our plan and God's plan. Really, it's usually when it comes to God's like God's character. So I will first get into God's character and sin and what that is. So God's character is holy, which means that um, I'm just angling my arm. So which God's character is holy, which means that he is perfect. He his ways are righteous. And sin is defined as anything that is against God's way. And it's something that hurts and affects people's lives. And it's it's uh, broken and it's just turned away from the righteous way that God's character is. And we, as humans, we were made in God's image. We were made to reflect his light and to live for him, to live in community with God since the beginning. But since Adam and Eve, the biblical characters who ate the forbidden fruit, since they did that and God had told them not to do that, they sinned against God, and that's where the spiral of humanity had begun. And so from there, we journey through the Bible in time to all of the Old Testament and the laws that God had for his people, Israel, and getting to Jesus when he died for our sins. And Jesus, he is God in human form. He was God, the Father's Son, who came down to earth in human form to pay the price for our sins, because atonement for our sins had to be made. And Jesus was the only one who could make atonement for the sin of humanity. And so he died on the cross for our sins over 2,000 years ago. He paid the price, and so that we could then be with God forevermore when we pass from our bodies. We are spirit in flesh. Flesh is the human part, the physical. It's that human like part of us. And the spirit is like our true selves. It is the part of us that came from above and will ascend back into heaven. It's who we like truly are in the spirit. And so God is spirit. We are both. We're humans. So we're in the physical, God is in the spiritual. Um, and so, from there, getting into the topic of plans. So our plan is the way that we do things. It's just our lives and how we structure it, what we decide to do with our time, and where we're going. Um, and then God's plan is his will and his way for our lives, and what he wants for us in our lives. which. God only wants the best for us. He wants good for everyone. God uh, wants, you know, he only wants the best for us. And so when we sin, that separates us from God. It distances us from, from God since he can't be connected with sin. That, that keeps us from experiencing his presence and his will. And so, to turn to God, we must repent of our sins, which means to ask for forgiveness. And God is righteous to forgive. He will forgive us for 
our wrongdoings. He wants to forgive us, and He loves us. He wants us to obey Him, and He wants us to turn to Him. So we can live our lives according to His purpose and His, his will. So, I, when coming to planning things, I have always seemed to just do things in my own way. I hadn't understood God's plan, and I hadn't understood what faith authentically was and growing and maturing in my faith. I have recently learned some things that are very important, and I've learned how to engage with God's plan over my own. And so when it comes to plans, God's will is typically not ours. It's a higher way. And it's something that we can't quite understand because God's ways are higher than humans. Since he made us, he created us in his image. His ways are higher. And um, he, yeah, he's God. So like whenever I plan things, I've just done it on my own accord, which means I haven't considered what God actually wants for my life. I haven't really considered it much. Uh, I've, I've kind of just done everything the way that I, I think I should do things. And that's, that's gotten me in a lot of, a lot of trouble and stress doing things that way. We weren't created to do things on our own strength. We were created to do things with the strength of God, that which empowers us. It's a way of life where we don't, we aren't stressed, we aren't anxious, we don't live that way because we trust God, which is faith. We give those plans and we give those burdens that we carry. We give those to Him, so that He can enlighten us and allow us to live the way that He has called us to live. And. So I've been praying and um, staying in prayer, staying in the Word, the Bible. Um, I have, you know, I have planned things, written things on sticky notes, and just written like the way that I wanted to do everything in the day from the beginning to the end. I've ordered things, structured things, tried to create all kinds of stuff, but it hasn't worked. I've just ended up stressing myself out with my ways of doing things, and it hasn't been sustainable. I've often gotten burned out, exhausted, and just wondering when things would work or when things would change. And I finally get to the point where I realize something. I realize that I'm not doing it the way that I was made to do it. I wasn't doing God's, I wasn't listening in on this God's will. I, I, and I've learned some things, and I will share some tips that I've learned this week, and actually really these last few weeks. Um, so, now, to be able to discern what God's will is for your life, we need to be willing to give up our plans to God in prayer. We need to trust our plans with Him, so that we don't get set on and expect that things are going to go the way that we want them to. I'd always expected things, my plans to work out. It just becomes a natural expectation that things are just going to work the way that I want them to work all the time. And that's unfortunately not how life works. And I'm, I've uncovered, I've been uncovering that. And so I've really just, um, I've really just, oh, the sun's setting. It's bright. The sun is setting but it's still really nice out. Um, and so I, um, I have learned that I need to give God my plans in place of His. That's the first step, is to give your burdens and your plans to God and to trust Him with faith. Faith is how this will work. Because faith, trusting in God, is the only true thing that will please Him. We were m made to walk in faith trusting in God's provisions. And so, with that, the next tip for discerning God's will for your life is to pray to Him, to ask Him what He wants you to do. Ask Him to guide you. And so, praying that, and then 
an another tip would then be to take signs from how, you know, from life in general. There are different signs we can take that can guide us in our purpose. We all have a purpose. And so to do that, we, we need to, um, we need to like check in on different types of signs, such as like, how am I feeling? Am I exhausted? Am I tired? Do I need to draw the line and let go of some things? Because typically we'll push ourselves to the limit. We, we keep going as people. We go, 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 you know? And that's how I've certainly been going and, until I drop, until I'm just a wolf. And then pushing some more. But God doesn't want us to live like that. He doesn't want us to live exhausted. In fact, he wants us to rest one day a week, which is known as the Sabbath day, the day of rest. Now, the Sabbath day is the seventh day in the week. It's, um, it's Saturday. It's Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. That is its original, which represents the seventh day after creation. God created the world in six days. And then he rested on the seventh day. And so that's the Sabbath, the day of rest. And because God rested, not that he needed to, not that he had to rest, like he, he, he just ceased from his work. And he invites us to rest too. He ex has that for us in his plan for us to rest one day of the week. Self-care, you know, time really to connect with him. He wants us to focus on him and our relationship, our connection with him all throughout that day. Though he calls us to live every day with, with his way in mind. He wants us to live in communion with him day in and day out. We're, and so this is a video for everyone from every level from, you know, maybe curious about the faith, all the way through somebody who's a mature believer in Jesus. Um, I just want this to make my videos accessible and to any anyone. Um, but I have to really take in mind the, you know, somebody who's curious or starting out in the faith, because I want to I wanna explain things in a way that I know that would be relatable and understandable. And I'm definitely a maturing believer. I'm not really sure I'd call myself a mature believer, but I'm definitely a maturing believer in Christ. Um, and so I, um, and I'm, I'm 22 now. Yeah, it's a neat time. Um, but yeah, for for the third tip, I think I was wrapping up on that, was to just take different signs, like how am I feeling? Do I need to let back on that? And ask, you know, just also, of course, asking God through prayer, but just, you know, allow, giving yourself permission to step back or to not do something that you would ornately just do. Because, you know, like your energy is more important. You know, taking care of yourself becomes a higher priority. That's one thing that really got critical for me, taking care of yourself. Um, and another thing is if something feels right, well, I, something that you just know, there's that trusting sensation that you know that something is right or not that propels you passionately to, to do something, you know, of course, something good, something that would be godly, you know, but that, that being a way. Now, another way could be how life plays out. What's going on around you? You know, how are things actually happening? In the sense that, like, so you want to do something, but signs are telling you that it's not just, it's not working out, or it's not going to really, it doesn't seem like it's meant to be, you know? Then you can kind of have an awareness that God actually has you to do something else. He wants you doing something else. Because a lot of the time, God's plan isn't innately our own plan. It's learning to tap into what His plan is and to allow Him to guide us in that path. And so it's just having an awareness that God might be wanting me to do something different today. He might want me to do something that's going to be better for me. It's going to be better for my health. It's going to be better for my well-being. And you're trusting that God is going to take care of you to guide you in what you should be doing. Now, sometimes God has us go through difficult seasons. It's not all supposed to be a breezy walk 
walking with, with God's way. Because in this life, in the scriptures, it says that we will have trials. That's how just simply how life is, and we will have tribulations. But we will have peace. And that's the emphasis. Walking with God, we will have peace. We will develop joy. We tap, you know, it's a it's a developing thing. It's a growing thing, but we will be able to have peace in God. Having faith allows us to have peace. And then it will allow us to then also have joy and other things which are known as fruits of the Spirit, which are attributes of God's way, like patience, gentleness, kindness, self-control, and those those things. Um, so that is that is essential. Um, and so those are three really good tips for how we can start to see what God's plan is just, you know, step by that step, one day at a time, and where God might be taking us. That way we can let go of our burdens and the way that we're doing things, if it's especially if it's when it's it's not really it's not really work if it's not really working out, you know, and you, we want to do it different, but we need that permission. We need to know that there is another way to do things. And that was what caught me is knowing that there is something, another way I can do things. I, I didn't know I could do things another way than how I was automatically just doing life. Knowing that there's a better way to do things that's better for us because God knows what we need. And we can't always discern that. And we don't always, you know, do, do that. And so... I just, I've learned a lot in a short amount of time with that. And I'm excited to see where that's going to take me on my journey. And I hope that this blesses your journey as well. Now, when it comes to starting your faith journey, the very start of the faith journey is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it's, it's um it's asking god it's it's asking god to come into your heart and i am going to read the bible verse romans i think it's 10 verses 9 through 10 i will be right back or i will i'll probably bring the card out here my cat's out here this is boots the other one's in the basement And so, I got the card. And so it says, in the Bible, Romans 10, chapter 10, verses 9 through 10 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart there is believing unto righteousness, and with the mouth there is confession unto salvation. It's that simple. It's as simple as the word itself. The Bible. I'll be right back. So that's pretty much that's pretty much a wrap up. Getting saved is the start of the journey. And from there we continue to grow in our relationship with God and I just hope that this video teaches and that this is just encouraging um, I just pray that everyone watching this has a blessed week and I will see you guys in the next video peace